worship today. I'm John Owen, Vicar of Steep and Troxfield with Privet. This morning, worship comes from the little church of St Peter's on the Green at Troxfield Green, a gem of a building hidden away in a little hamlet filled with lovely people, of course, and it nestles uh, in a beautiful rural setting. It merits a mention in the in Nicholas Pevsner's uh, Buildings of England. Here it is, Foxfield, St Peter on the Green. Built on the site of the medieval church in 1887, small, of nave and chancel with a bell turret. On the left-hand side of the path to the church, an 18th century gravestone with two cherubs blowing the last trump. Well, that gravestone is near the yew trees and uh, it's of the late Robert Love, who was a benefactor in the area. His name is still remembered and associated with Troxfield School, where he uh, founded the school in his day. It continues strong today. Uh, it's now a primary school. It's grown considerably and it's a church school uh, with a great team of staff and pupils and parental community. This church has some very beautiful glasswork in it. And strangely enough, it's not until I brought my camera here and I'm standing in an empty building that I have really started to explore the glasswork. So like the enthusiast who has discovered something new, I'm going to tell you all about it. And if you know it already, well, don't mind me sharing the enthusiasm. By the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I save? Satisfied. 
The theme of uh, the service this morning is last words and legacy. The last words of Jesus in today's Gospel reading are his departure and words which are remembered by the Christian community before he leaves and ascends to the Father. And all around me in the glasswork of the windows there are remembered local people, particularly members of the Caulfield family who lived locally within the parish. And the glasswork is great quality and there are several saints remembered, but there are also members of the Caulfield family. And I'd like to explore that a little bit to uh, ask us all really the question, what's our legacy? What do we leave behind? When we've gone, what do people remember us for? And then moving into consideration of what Jesus has left us with in the gift of the Holy Spirit, his teachings and his presence. The Gospel reading for this morning. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made known your name to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them, and now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Lord. The medieval church at Froxfield Green was demolished in 1862. William Nicholson built the church. The Caulfields living at nearby Broadhanger contributed much of the stained glass. Several saints are represented, Swithin, Anglo-Saxon saint and associated with Hampshire. Michael and George, 
in the west windows. Patrick of Ireland and John the Baptist in memory of personal losses in the Caulfield family. There's one of John pointing to Jesus. An Irish background there in this scene. As Patrick drives out the snakes from Ireland. Wilfred was a cult figure in the 7th century church. Here he arrives at Selfie to convert the Saxons. And the locals seem happy to receive his blessing. A bishop with strong opinions and a forceful personality, fishing for all, Note the fish he carries. And look at this determined face with its strong nose. Wilford had his detractors. There was more than a bit of the Prince Bishop about him. Yet he also left a legacy of new monasteries, new churches, patronage of the arts and support for new Christian communities. We can't know what our own legacy will be. Jesus' words in the farewell discourse of John's Gospel are a prayer to God for us. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. So Christ reigns the world is in his hands. A legacy of hope. Let us pray for the church and for the world and thank God for his goodness. As we wait to celebrate the coming of the Spirit at Pentecost, we join our prayers with those of the global movement, Thy Kingdom Come as we pray for others to come to know Jesus Christ. Let us give thanks for the gift of faith as we take a moment to reflect on what it means to us and how it shapes our lives. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of faith and pray that the people we hold before you will also be enabled to receive that gift from you that it will transform their lives and the lives of the people around them. We have heard how St Wilfred fought disappointment and obstacles in exercising his faith and pray that we may persevere in our own journey of faith so that we too may give glory to God. We pray for the world still wrapped in the troubles of coronavirus. We pray for the leaders of the nations for our Queen and Government, and for all in authority with hard decisions to make that affect the well-being of so many people. Great God of all, we pray for wisdom, for good judgment and for discernment amongst those who lead and govern the nations of the world. We give thanks for the advances of science and for the benefits of technology that enable the sharing of information and encourage communication. May these gifts be used wisely for the good of all people. We pray for those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. We remember those who are separated from their families and friends at a time of need, and we pray for those who mourn. We give thanks for the staff in hospitals, care homes and surgeries, as well as those who visit to give care to those in need at home. Loving God, help us to show your love to those in need. And may all those in key worker roles be assured of the gratitude of the people they serve. 
We pray for all who are sick, fearful or anxious, and we ask your loving comfort for those who mourn. We thank you for the generosity of the Caulfield family in providing a lasting legacy for the needy of this community. And we remember with gratitude those who have died recently. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Heavenly Father, grant that these prayers may be acceptable in your sight and that they may be fulfilled as is best for us according to your will. Amen. Before the blessing, can I uh, give a word of thanks to those who make our churchyards and the grounds so very attractive, especially at this time when we're not all able to gather in church for worship. But within all the churches uh, of the parishes of Roxfield and Steep, uh, the grounds are so well kept. And thank you very much to those who have been mowing the grass and tending to the flowers, particularly those who place flowers outside the doors of our shut churches, just to remind everyone that our churches are places of life and of value within the community. And a particular word, word of thanks today to Suzanne and Jan, who have prepared these rather lovely lilies. I've taken lots of uh, Puritan uh, before I came in here, just so I didn't sneeze and uh, look terribly undignified for the morning worship. Some of you may be able to join us on Zoom for Zoom coffee if you're watching this on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. There won't be coffee Zoom every time it's watched on YouTube, but do join us if you had the link from our local new sheet. So if you should require a new sheet but didn't know that Anne, our administrator, sends out a magnificent uh, new sheet weekly on PDF, it will go straight into your inbox but you just need to contact Anne Grove, Benefits Administrator, details on our website steepfoxfield.com. The words of the blessing and then after that, I think there will probably be a dismissal from one of our younger members of our congregations. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you all and those whom you love this day and for evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen.